Welcome everybody to this meeting. I'm so excited to, excited to have you here. I'm going to apologize for my weird English. I hope you all understand what I'm going to say. If not, please feel free to um, make some questions in the chat and at the end of the meeting, I'm going to answer your questions. Your questions can be even in Spanish or English. Um, welcome to this uh, session. I'm going to talk about the loss of uh, heritage, architectonic heritage, more of the most of them. I hope you all enjoy uh, this presentation. So for I have to start for presenting me. Uh, I am Charlene Ceniceros. I'm architect and urban designer. I was born and raised in Tijuana and I was my whole life uh, raising here in this border area. But also I'm a fanatic of uh, traveling. I must say that I'm a history geek and I studied architecture in central Mexico in Monterrey. So I'm from the Tecnológico de Monterrey, and I'm an urban designer from Universidad Politécnica de Cataluña in Barcelona, Spain. So probably that's why uh, my whole career I've been like um, so worried about the historical places and the, the heritage and cultural places in the cities. This is my team. Uh, since uh, 2015, I lead my own office of architecture. We are, uh, an this is an incredible team. We are just women in the, in the office, not because it's a decision, it because it just happened. And well, uh, there there are my girls where who I uh, connect with the same feelings and passions and uh, postures about city and urban design. It's Tatiana Perez, Carolina Gomez, and Karen Nieves. And well, uh, for understand the importance of this session, I have to talk a little bit of Tijuana. Tijuana is a border city, as we know. Uh, we're just 132 years old. Uh, we're mostly people, uh, not native people. We're 40% of native people. Um, we are uh, bordered with San Diego, California, and together we consider that it's a population of 5 million inhabitants. And to understand how Tijuana became a city is uh, because of the in the 1800s, uh, there were territory that was Mexican territory. And when there, this border new border happens, uh, Mexico need to put an office uh, to regulate to regulate products that was uh, gone on and off from Mexican territory. So that's how Tijuana starts. Uh, some pictures about the beginnings of the city and the and the borders um, um, thing. And it's a city that has been grown uh, a lot in a very short time. We became, uh, we are now about almost 2 million people. And well, this is how our, our urban uh, sprawl have been growing. And we receive people for, from, whole, from the whole Mexican Republic. We are a mixture of like every single state of the Republic. Most of the people try to cross the border to go to Cal and work to United States. Most of that people don't have that opportunity and they stayed in the city. And this is how the city has been growing. At the end of the day, it is a very uh, wealthy city uh, in comparison to the other cities in Mexico. So that's, that's why people come and stay and live in Tijuana. And the thing with our uh, historical heritage talking about Tijuana, uh, it's that it's a very young city that beside uh, these Asians and re cultural richness that we have in central Mexico, 
our patrimony, our heritage, our cultural places don't look that important uh, uh, besides this richness that we have. So probably that's why people from Tijuana don't understand the importance uh, of this, um, of our cultural places. So this is uh, some of the places I'm, that I'm going to talk about. Uh, most of them, uh, they're, they're as they haven't been considered as heritage. Uh, there's not much information of this. This is mostly a thing that I have done um, as a hobby, <laughs> uh, as a passion to to research about this, these um, places. Two of them became an, a project, but most of them, it's like a very hobby thing. This is the places that are the that is located the uh, the buildings that I'm talking about. Most of them are, uh, of course, in the central part uh, downtown area of Tijuana, and the other ones uh, are a little bit more here. That it's Colonia Cacho. Colonia Cacho. It's when the rich families of Tijuana starts to be. Uh, to become wealthy and become it starts to uh, make their own houses. This is like the very first formal uh, uh, fraccionamiento uh, neighborhood in Tijuana. And this other one big place uh, was the Casino Caliente. That it it was one of the motors that uh, make Tijuana also be a, a, a big city. So I start with this one. Uh, this is <laughs> this one was uh, mostly a fight that I did. Uh, it, I have a beautiful, even if it, it had a very bad and very sad uh, ending, I have very good memories uh, working in this as an activist, uh, it was La Puerta Mexico. It was uh, the building entrance uh, in the border in San Isidro y Tijuana, the San Isidro port of entry. It was uh, part of a pro program, federal program in Mexico that was called PRONAF, Programa Nacional Fronterizo, which was National Border Program, that tried to enhance the entrance uh, in the border parts in Mexico. That program was huge. And it, the importance of this program is that by the first time, uh, central government, federal government starts to make big projects outside Mexico City or outside uh, central Mexico. So that's why people from that uh, time remember this program as an incredible, incredible moment of Mexico. At the beginning of this research, uh, people thought that our Puerta Mexi Mexico was from Mario Pani, but actually it was, wasn't from him. Mario Pani was one of the biggest architects in Mexico. He, did, he was the director of this program and he did some of the entrances, but in another places like Matamoros, Nogales, and Piedras Negras. And he also was the, uh, he made the master plan of uh, la UNAM, Universidad Autónoma de México. And he did one of the, he did one of the master plans, plans for Tijuana, but the, he, he great legacy in architect, in Mexican architecture was, was the social housing, which is not so low income housing, housing uh, for Mexico. He, he did the very first blocks of uh, housing for low income people in Mexico. And uh, he did one of the masters, master plan for the Zona Rio in Tijuana. And there were three, three master plans uh, and that's how the canalization of the ri river 
could could be done. And one of the projects of the this big master planning was uh, building La Puerta Mexico. And in English would say Mexican door. Um, but the architect of La Puerta Mexico was Manuela Rosa. Uh, Manuela Rosa worked in the Mario Pani studio. He associates with Guillermo Rosel de la Lama. And he did also some things with Felix Candela. At the end of the day, uh, he didn't do that much architecture, like physical architecture. He uh, dedicated more to the journalism talking all the time about architecture. And well, some pictures at that time, this is a building from 1965. Uh, it was two shells um, that were uh, controlling, the, controlling the entrance to um, buses, the, the entrance and the exit from United States and also was landscaping and uh, he defined it as a river to as a bridge to cross the a river of cars uh, and he also has uh, an auditory for binational encounters uh, the magnificence of this is where there were two shells with no columns in in between this is uh, because of the technical construction of that time that that led us to have this incredible uh, building. It when I was say I was saying it like it has like very a, a lot of movement plastic. Uh, when I say plastic, it's like if you were playing with play doh, you know, uh, that uh, gives you the this kind of uh, forms and geometries, they call it hyperbolic, paraboloides hyperbolicos, or it, it, in English probably is the same. You, I, th I think you can understand. And this is with reinforced uh, concrete. This is some pictures of the construction. Uh, and in the mid century is what, when this technique became more popular. So that was important to my maintain also like the big uh, thing about this is um, the construction technique and the, the geometry that the, this technique per, it, it led us to have. I compare this language with worldwide uh, language. This for me, I can see this Puerta Mexico as important as some architect architecture of Felix Handela, of Oscar Neymeyer, of Ero Sarinen, eh, Eladio Dieste, or even uh, language till uh, this time, like this one from Zaha Hadid. Uh, this is more um, pictures of the, the very first time that, I, that they open it. But at that time, maybe it's the 80s, the government already have sell, sold uh, this area, this green area. And I'm going to share you this, uh, uh, this part of a text that I found from, Rosa, from Manuela Rosa. I'm not going to uh, read it because it has like a very difficult to pronounce. <laughs> words but the thing is with this phrase that i going to he was talking about the greatness of the mexican architecture and the greatness of the uh of, of the city mexican cities as as a as a culture and the funny thing with this and i'm going to to read the last part it's repeating er errors abroad um whose success is based in motorized cars but not in the richness and the composition of the space and this thing it's fun because they were demolished his building in order to have more space for the cars and it's also a thing um it's also a thing with that goes against um uh, 
the new thinking of urban mobility or not the new thinking, the need of, of sustainable urban mobility, no, to uh, sacrifice a culture in order to, to make more space for the cards. And this is some pictures for the 1990s, maybe they, um, they cover the shells and the whole building with aluminum and something like that. That it's weird because the, the greatness of this building is actually that it was made from reinforced concrete. So uh, at that time, we start to understand the ignorance about or the lack of knowledge about the importance of this building. Uh, this is what happened at the end. Uh, we couldn't uh, save this. Um, we were a uh, pretty small. Uh, I was a pretty small um, group of citizens that was that were, were worried uh, about this um, issue, uh, and well, I was also comparing this building with this one in United States. This one is one from Ero Sarinen. It was a uh, old terminal um, air, air, airport that. TWA terminal in the John F. Kennedy Airport in New York. And it was also the same problem. It was a, a beautiful building right in the middle of a huge communication complex. This was uh, right in the um, airport. And I also compare these two images. If you can see the drawings, it, it looks like the same language. The term, the, this, TWA building was from 1962 and the Puerta Mexico was from 1965. So if we compare times, uh, I feel like we were like very vanguardist or very at the same time uh, in this thinking. Uh, one of this, this one that I say have a really happy ending and the other one as the one that have here uh, did, didn't. Um, the TWA building became a hotel, a beautiful hotel. And uh, before his, its inauguration actually was a set for a fashion show for Louis Vuitton. And well, and I'm so happy that they keep it and they open it. And now I will have the opportunity to meet the, this, to know this building. Very sad not to, to have it in here in Tijuana, but uh, we made our best. Some other pictures of the time. And this is how it looks. No, we sacrificed this building and also we sacrifice the landscaping that it's also worrying in order to have more space for cars. And this is part of a huge complex that I'm going to talk about later, but I think that it's important to say because uh, Torre Caliente, it is not the original one. Torre Caliente um, was, um, part of the Agua Caliente complex. And it is right here when this, uh, where this monument is right now. And this is how it looks, Torre Agua Caliente, <laughs> uh, right now. But they re made a replica in uh, the 70s. So that's why I put it separately. I'm going to go a little bit faster because there's some of some more to see. Um, this is where the replica was, and this is where the original one. I mean, this is where the replica is right now, and this is where the original one used to be. La Ocho. La Ocho was a um, municipal jail in Tijuana. It was uh, designed from 1958, but in the 70s, they made a remodel. So actually, uh, this is not. Uh, it was located in the downtown area. And actually this building was not the original one, but people uh, got really upset when they turned down. Uh, I guess much of the Tijuana people had some memories here, I don't know, but they, it, it was uh, something really important in the, in the memory of the Tijuanos. 
So people got really upset when they turned down in 2011. So they pushed the authorities to put uh, to make a park in order to satisfy to satisfy the um, lack of green areas and public spaces that we have in Tijuana. So the happy thing with this is that we now have El Parque La Ocho. Motela Sierra. Okay, this one is 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 is. It's my thing. I haven't ever, never heard someone in Tijuana say something beautiful about this building. Uh, they just remember like one of mm, one of the one of the generals. But I remember this building in my childhood, and this is a building probably from the '60s. This was located a couple of blocks from El Toreo de Tijuana. And this is where the people used to come to have a drink uh, after the bullfighting um, showings. And this is the way to go to Rosarito and South Baja. So most of the, uh, there were a lot of motels in this um, Boulevard Cuauhtémoc Sur that becomes a, a, a federal one highway. And I found this, making my research, I found this drawing about Motela Sierra. And for me, when I was a child, I I look, the, I used to look at that, that uh, place. And for me, it was like if this was um, taken from the Jetsons. And for me, it was like fascinating to have a building that looked like a Jetson, Jetsons building. And... It is also, and I put these images uh, to understand the design guidelines from that age. Uh, it was like this was called googie, googie and, and architectonically uh, mid-century. It, it was all, uh, architecture from mid-century, but this googie movement about the signs and the drawings and all this stuff is more, uh, it was represented from California. I remember that California was being progressive last century and uh, this thing in the mid-century about thinking a lot about the future and having this language, this graphic language for me is really interesting. Uh, this is how I look. Uh, this is some of the interiors, uh, some of the happenings in the places. This uh, image could, could be could have been taken of the uh, movie Catch Me If You Can, and more of that. And this is how it become to be losing. And this is uh, important and also important that I have discovered that with the building, the green also goes away. And we, as we can see the picture, the, the green went away too. So this is how it looks right now. And this is how the before and after. Uh, writing for um, this uh, Motela Sierra, it was Casa La Cacho. For me, it also, was also a um, beautiful house that remembers the same that I already say. Uh, this one, I find that it was going to be demolished. I went directly with the client as a metiche, I don't know how to say in English, but I think much of you will understand uh, to propose uh, to save the house and have the same square meters uh, of, oops, the same square meters of um, um, rentable area. Uh, this is how the interiors look like. And it has it this hall. When with this hall, we were we would gain more spaces to make another volume in order to have the same uh, local um, uh, commercial spaces that the client wanted. This was not my direct direct client. This is my my the construction company contact me for other side and I didn't know that it was the same place uh, in order to uh, design a plaza. 
commercial plaza. So this is my original proposal. Uh, I got in really trouble um, trying to save it. I got some trouble with uh, my direct client, uh, but I finally have to design this but I want to keep this. So this is my story that I am um, talking a little bit quick because uh, we are running out of time. Uh, this is another one that we find. We just find uh, with books because we love to do research. This is a kiosco of Parque Teniente Guerrero in, el, in downtown area. We find that the original one was more modern than the one that we have right now. We don't have that much uh, information about the year. We can see because of because of the construction of the uh, church. This I I found something about 1962 or something like that, but it looks more of that time that the one that we have. The one fake that we have right now. El Toreo de Tijuana. El Toreo de Tijuana, um, it was a place where the bullfighting uh, shows were done. This is from 1930s. And they start to demolish when he was, it was going to, tur uh, to turn 50 years. And when it happens, uh, the buildings can be uh, declared or protect, but um, they say that the structure was not um, good enough to keep it. So that's how they start the demolition. Uh, people in Tijuana, it was the, one of the biggest scars in Tijuana hearts because they could have done something cultural instead of tearing down. But now we're going to have this huge complex of commercial uh, commercial and mixing buildings instead of. And the last one, I have this one um, at the end of the presentation because it's the one that has some hope and it was the, the most, um, big losing of Tijuana. I'm talking about the Agua Caliente complex. And actually one of um, one of of the session was going to be here, but we couldn't do. I hope you all can join us next year to visit this site. And well to understand the importance of this site is the, the scale of this that it's, it, it was huge uh for to understand a little bit more this is the campestre golf uh, court yard i don't know the campestre el campo de golf and this one is the cholos stadium the cholos uh, our um, uh, team soccer team stadium and this is a very important via uh, very important via in Tijuana that, that connects connect us with uh, with downtown. And well, uh, the Casino Acoliente started when the busted law was going on in the United States. It was prohibited to drink and to gamble in the United States. So they make this huge complex in Mexico in order, in order to have people to, to have fun. Uh, the, these are the um, partners of the um, complex. One of them was Abelardo L. Rodriguez, who were president of Mexico later on. Two movies of, of Hollywood were uh, filmed here. Um, the casino received also a lot of uh, Hollywood celebrities in the, in the complex. The architect was John McAllister, uh, an architect from LA. He later did a lot of um, hospitality architecture in Las Vegas. And the language of the architecture was a uh, Californian style, Californiano in Spanish. This I will consider that it's a late, inter late interpretation of um, well, I'm going to talk about late interpretation of modernism, but I refer the modernism of the late 1800s, uh, talking about the 
recovering the heritage, like the new, new colonial, new uh, Gothic, new all the news that came out. Uh, one of the biggest um, exposures of this one was Antonio Gaudí in Barcelona, and that's how uh, they here in California, they try to remember the time that used to be Mexican territory, but also that would be colonized, but also had some uh, Islamic influence. And the same landscaper of Balboa Park uh, was the same uh, landscaper of Casino Caliente, but we can find this kind of architecture in Balboa Park also. And, but let's remember that it's a late movement. Uh, let's say that the original arts and crafts uh, was from the late 800s, but by the time that Casino Caliente was going on in 1928, they were already done the La Villa Savoie in France in 1926. And Juan O'Gorman was uh, designing uh, Diego and Frida's house in 1932. So let's say that we as a, region were a little bit late on the movement, but also, but but I consider an important movement because we conservative, conservative, conservative people from uh, central Mexico took this language and put it in, put it on. This is uh, some, we can see some of these languages in Colonia Condesa, Polanco and Colonia Roma in Mexico City, for instance. And to understand the hugeness uh, of this, uh, it, it was a complex of uh, 50 room hotel, casino, restaurant, patio, pool, tennis court, golf course, clubhouse, bungalows, uh, racetrack for hosts, racetrack for um, galgos, aviation camps, parking, Railway, uh, garage, kindergarten, uh, aviation, and, and navigation camp too. So people could uh, get here by plane, uh, the small ones, and uh, and by train too. And this is a little bit more to understand where was located all the the stuff. We can see also this is now a street, but we can we can see around here that it was. Um, uh, we can see in the urban layout of the city. Uh, actually, this boulevard was um, a landing area. We can see here the Cholos Stadium. The, it was um, the original race tracking and the original golf course was a, of the Campestre was the original from the Casino Caliente. And this is how I'm going to take, share some pictures that how the building uh, looked like. This is one of the uh, pool, the entrance to the spa, some of interiors, interiors um, the entrance to the hotel, um, some more of the interiors. This is a uh, great salons. The casino, this is the patio, Andaluz. This reminds me a little bit, uh, this is, reminds me more also, there's another casino in Ensenada, El Riviera, that was pretty much the same. This is more about, about interiors. Uh, the entrance to the spa, uh, the bungalows, the jockey club and the race tracking area. Well, at the end, uh, in the 1935, the casino was closed uh, by an order of Presidente Lazaro Cárdenas. They uh, prohibit gambling games and he uh, expropriated and made it a military school. In the 50s, uh, the original jockey club was uh, burned, also La Torre Agua Caliente. And this is how it looks in the 60s. By the 50s, by the six, the 50s, uh, they took, uh, they opened more schools, uh, element, uh, elementary and high school, I mean, middle school and high school uh, schools in the complex. So they took classes like this. 
this is how uh, it's right now divided the, the schools. This is La Lazaro Cárdenas, eh, Escuela Eti, Escuela Poli, and a couple of two more. And by the 70s, much of the uh, heritage was, was already gone. We, there's only the minarete and the pool and one part of the facade of the spa area. And this is in uh, the minarete, it's uh, contained uh, inside the, the school. No one can get there. There were a renovation in 2006. And this is the areas that is still um, alive. This is mostly like a trace, a bungalows area because none of them are still original. This is the kitchen that it's mostly ruins. And this is a little bit of the history. And I'm gonna start to finalize and we have hope. And I want to share this uh, picture of Turista Libre and Derek Chin. Thank you, Derek Chin, for pushing me to make this presentation. This is the first time that we went to visit the Minarete. Minarete is not uh, open to the public. He was going to make a tour to visit uh, great monuments of Tijuana. This is probably in 2015, maybe 20, I don't remember. But this is the very first time that um, tourists gone to watch the Minarete. Uh, and the second part is the, by the 2016, someone called me to, uh, to participate in this project. This is the picture that I took uh, as the very first picture that, that I took when I was doing my master's. Uh, I was um, proposing to recuperate to um, to get this some of the to save some places of the space, and a group of people uh, worked really hard to um, rebuild the fauna, La Fuente del Fauno, which is this one. We can tell the scale of the the um, this place as we see people inside. Uh, the, it is finally done uh, after four years. Uh, I hope you can all come and visit next year. This was going to be one of the events that was going to be done. This is how it looks right now. This is the time that the uh, people give to the uh, to the community. And this is a thing for the proposal. I, I have been working with these people in order to see the macro um, intervention that could, could be done in this place. We can recuperate the area of the pool uh, to make it more um, like a museum, like an exterior museum. Uh, we can recuperate, we can have uh, gain more landscaping and some place to connect directly with the um, uh, Minarete. That uh, when I say Minarete, is this thing that we have. <laughs> and there's some uh, forms, and this is our dream to, to have a new cultural and public space in our Tijuana. So this is a dream for us and this is our hope. And thank you so much for listening to me and we're going to open some question and answer session. Thank you so much. So I can, um, uh, Caro, if you can please help me to open the mic. I, if you can raise your hands or I'm going to read the chat. Uh, I'm going to close that. I'm going to stop sharing in order to see you all. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, and if you can uh, raise your hands, if you have any question. I see no questions. So, I'm going to read one by one <clears throat> the chat. Carolina Aravena, hi everyone. Hi, Carolina. <laughs> Stacy, nice to meet you, Stacy, finally. Uh, so, uh, Well, thank you for your congratulations, Stacy, Lauro, Shots. Uh, gracias, Álvaro. Eh, okay, la fotógrafa Abigail Villavicencio, who wants to share, share us more pictures. Thank you, Abigail. Yeah, totally. We, we totally going to accept. Um, So if you don't have any question or nothing more to see, <laughs> someone wants to speak, to say something, maybe a joke. Did you understand me? <laughs> I can start speaking Spanish. I can do it in Spanish too. Just kidding. What? Hola, Hola Alvaro. ¿Cómo estás, Arlene? Bien. Muchas, muchas felicidades. Mira, estoy aquí con Abigail Villavicencio, ella es fotógrafo profesional, estaba interesada en la, en la conversación contigo y este, quiere hacerte unos comentarios. Claro, bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Hola, Chiquín, buenas tardes. Hola, Abigail. No me Hola, muy interesante tu plática, increíbles imágenes, no sé de dónde las sacaste, pero felicidades, hiciste mucha labor. Gracias, pues de todos lados. <laughs> She, she's uh, saying about the pictures, or how can I find, uh, found it? It's because years of uh, researching and, and uh, collecting pictures, let's say. Ya sé, hiciste una gran labor y un gran trabajo. Oye, nada más una pregunta yo tengo. Disculpa porque no tengo en inglés porque mi inglés es pésimo. No eh, importa, pero, el mío también. Me, <laughs> pero creo que me entiendes, que te entiendo. Eh, mira, una pregunta. ¿Tú tienes una fundación, tienes una asociación o, o, o cómo, para qué es esto? ¿Para qué escuchar? ¿Por qué, por qué estás promoviendo esto? No, eh, lo estamos promoviendo con, como activismo. Yo soy arquitecta. Eh, yo crecí, eh, bueno, he tenido contacto con el centro del país y veo cómo recuperan edificios y luego los hacen restaurantes súper interesantes. Acabo de estar en el Creo en Oaxaca y cosas así. Yo también hice mis prácticas profesionales en, estado, en Ciudad de México, en un despacho que también recuperó varios edificios de la Condesa y los reconvirtió. Entonces, yo como arquitecta me gustaría tener clientes con esa visión y mi, mi tarea empezó tratando de convencer a los clientes. Pero como no he tenido respuesta, pues esto ya se convirtió más en un acto de activismo. <risa> eh, y pues ya vez, ahora en una plática de San Diego. Dicen. Así es. Um, Charly, te felicito. Entonces, es algo que tú estás haciendo por tu cuenta. Sí. Por tu cuenta totalmente. ¿Hay un grupo? ¿Tienes a, a colegas uniéndose a, a tu visión? ¿Nada? Mi grupo de arquitectas en la oficina, levanten la mano, chicas, Carolina, Tatiana y Karen. Eh, felicidades a todas. Ellas. Muy bien, lo están haciendo muy bien y qué bueno que están queriendo rescatar lo poco que nos queda aquí en Tijuana, ¿no? Ya es bien poquito, pero pues que se rescate lo que, lo que se alcance. Así Porque van rápido las demoluciones, sí. ¿no? la, 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 van rápido los edificios estos sí, altos. Sí, sí, totalmente. Eh, pues felicidades, me uno, este, igual ahorita te pongo mis, mis, de cómo me puedes contactar, en lo que les pueda servir, soy una humilde fotógrafa aquí en la región, claro, no, no, de Guadalajara, pero me siento tijuanense de corazón, ya sabes, me quedé porque Tijuana me cautivó en todos los sentidos, era niña, entonces yo me siento aquí de Tijuana, entonces como dice aquí el abogado, que el sentido de pertenecer aquí a Tijuana hace que Tijuana sea más grande. Y yo me uno a lo que les pueda aportar, a los que les pueda ayudar, con todo gusto. Ay, totalmente. Muchísimas gracias. Sí, pues la cosa es sumar esfuerzos. 
Exacto, así es. Muchísimas gracias. Pues felicidades, chicas. Las dejo para que sigas contestando el chat. Gracias. Uh, I'm going to translate if there's some people in English. She was uh, she was asking me about if I have any association or um, something like that. And I uh, answered that no, we actually, this started uh, trying to, um, to make the clients to keep, to keep the uh, heritage patrimony. Uh, and it became like a, a research at the end. So this is how we start. Some other questions? Sí, para seguir el tema. Hola, ¿qué tal? Carolina de San Diego. Para seguir con el tema de eh, salvar patrimonio, eh, y ahora que comentaste que fue algo más personal, un proyecto personal, ¿Se han presentado posibilidades o se han acercado a ti para hacer una asociación sobre el patrimonio y salvar estos lugares eh, históricos? And um, I can translate. <laughs> um, I was asking if, um, uh, since she started this as a habit, uh, is there, is, are the plans in place to make it into an association or if, if maybe the, the city of Tijuana has reached out to you Um, you know, with an offer maybe to initiate something. Hola Carolina, gracias por traducirme. <ríe> este, y gracias por tu pregunta. Eh, hay esfuerzos como muy aislados. Eh, hay, la verdad es que habemos poca gente joven y no me considero tan joven, pero la verdad es que es gente ya... Eh, muy mayor metida en esto, que obviamente necesita mucha ayuda y mucho apoyo para lo del agua caliente. Fue por eso o sea, quizá tardamos años, se necesita dinero, apoyo, gente que dedique totalmente eh, su tiempo en esto. O Sabemos gente que está metida, involucrada en otro tipo de causas como hospitales, deporte y demás, pero necesitemos gente que que quiera juntar dinero para, para este tipo de asociaciones y que realmente se preocupe. Eh, no, la verdad es que ha habido poco interés y lo siento inclusive hasta de los ciudadanos. Eh, quizá también por eso le asocio que somos 40% nativos, la asocio también a la juventud, que no logran identificar qué es patrimonio y qué no. Entonces, esto es el paso uno. Mi paso uno fue, a, empecé peleándome con todo el mundo, y mi paso uno de que, bueno, digo, tengo que enseñarle a la gente por qué y qué tipo de arquitectura es importante. Entonces, creo que por ahí estamos empezando y espero que se sumen muchos más. Súper interesante. Muchas gracias por tu respuesta. Y um, a mí me encanta todo lo que es de la arquitectura y reservar conservar, el, el, bueno, hay que conservarlo, así que si es que en algún momento, no sé, debe, podrían eh, hacer grupos, actividades, a mí me, me encantaría participar, a ver qué se puede hacer para promover, ¿no? Como se dice en inglés, to create awareness. <ríe> así sí, que claro. te, te mando un email más adelante porque me encantaría participar en esto si es que te hace la oportunidad. Claro que sí, Carolina, muchísimas gracias. Uh, answering in English, uh, I said that it is a lack of uh, knowledge about architecture and and the the importance of these buildings here in the region. Uh, we are 40% natives, and the youngness of the architecture also it's complicated to people to understand. Um, it's I, I have find very few people in, uh, involved in this. Um, in this movement of uh, keeping the heritage. But this is the, the step number one, to communicate the people, the, the importance of, of, and the great meaning of having this, to keep these cultural and architecture places in the city. Yes, I know Maria Curry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have a uh, yeah, I have a uh, work, uh, and I have uh, yeah, I have worked with with her. Uh, she was also involved in um, in La Puerta Mexico, and also with uh, 
la fuente del fauno. And yes, she's trying to give me her responsibility to me. She's a great um, conser conserv conservadora, conserva conservacionista. I don't know how to even say it in Spanish, but she's a, a great architect who has always worked with heritage architecture, for sure. I'm going to share the link of this meeting. It was a question from the chat, if I knew Maria Curry. <laughs> Ay, saludos del Proyecto Scali. I work there, one of my very first jobs in Tijuana. <laughs> It's another question for, from the chat. Loud and shots, if I have an historical sites committee, uh, not, uh, it is, yeah, uh, it is a small one, but it's a very close. Uh, they, it's like a cultural consejo, a cultural group, uh, that the cultural groups in Tijuana focus more into cultural activities in order and, and instead of cultural saving cultural places that's a, a thing they're more focusing on theater and dance and all those kinds of stuff so five minutes if there's an, another question. I would love to take a screenshot. Please, please, please turn on the cameras. I want to see you all. Uh, <laughs> even if, uh, I don't know, but I want to say hi. I should set this at the beginning of the meeting in order to like do something with your hair if you need it or not. <laughs> Okay, so um, Tatiana is going to take us a picture. I'm going to thank you all for um, for being here and for listening to me and for um, for care a little bit of Tijuana heritage. So one, two, say cheese, three. <laughs> Thank you so much for no tengo ay Gaby hola hola a todos eh, thank you so much for coming it has been a pleasure for me uh, it's a way to make justice to all this um, heritage disappeared heritage eh, y pues nada muchísimas gracias a todos este no importa los que se les descompuso la cámara todo bien <laughs> La compañía es lo que cuenta. Este, muchísimas gracias, de verdad es un honor. Eh, para mí es súper importante que San Diego Design Week haya, haya considerado este tema tan importante eh, después de que me he topado con mucha gente que no lo considera como algo, como algo interesante o, o algo que no le presta atención. Entonces, pues, thank you so much, people. See you next time. I hope you see you next year in the eh, eh, La Fuente del Fauno. Bye-bye.